welcome to another episode of Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin and today we are in Budapest, Hungary. This is a historic city on the banks of the river Danube and it is packed with some delicious food if you know where to look. So in today's episode we are taking you for the ultimate Hungarian food tour, exploring this city inside and out and taking you to view some of its incredible sights. I am super excited to be here, so let's get started. We are at our first stop for lunch slash breakfast today and this is a really unassuming uh, kind of quintessential Hungarian restaurant and we are here to try the famous goulash soup. So you can see their menu is actually uh, quite small and that is usually indicative of a good restaurant. Right at the top of their menu they have the Hungarian goulash soup. We're just going to get the small size because we will be doing a lot of eating today. And I am super hungry, so let's order and then we'll start eating. So we have our goulash soup. This is one of the national dishes of Hungary. You can see it's got this rich red broth. This is a sweet paprika broth. There's all kinds of vegetables in here, potatoes, carrots, and then lots of beef as well. And then you can see these kind of like little, they're almost like dumplings and they're made with uh, egg and uh, flour and then over here of course we have some bread on the side and every Hungarian dish also goes well with a nice cold glass of beer so we have the local beer Dreher here and uh, they definitely uh, serve you some big bottles too so this just looks so good I'm gonna go right in and just get a big scoop with some meat and some vegetables let's try that mm. oh man it's such a rich flavor, slightly sweet, very meaty, and then just hearty with all those vegetables. The beef in there is so ridiculously tender. And this place that we're having it at, let me tell you a little secret. We've been here in Hungary for 16 days and we've eaten lots of goulash too. This one is the best. We leave the links for uh, all the directions to every restaurant down in the description box. So when you're visiting Budapest, you can come here. It's the best goulash soup and it's also the cheapest one that we've found. So there's a couple things on the table here that you can add, which I really like to add. First of all, this, which is sort of like a spicy uh, pepper paste. You can put a little bit of that in and then mix it all up. And also black pepper goes really well with this. We ordered the small, as I mentioned, because we're doing a lot of eating today. And actually the small is very small. It's almost in like a little mug. The large is much bigger and much more filling, but that's okay, because we're gonna be eating a lot today. Let's try this with the condiments added. Mm. Oh yeah. With that spicy paste, it really just brings out the flavor of that paprika. Also, this goes incredibly well with bread. This is perfect for like a cold, winter day, it'll just warm your soul, warm your whole body, so delicious. And the atmosphere of this restaurant is really what makes this place set apart from all the tourist destinations. It's really nice. Cheers. Wow, that really hit the spot. This place is called Ildiko Konyaja. Uh, I'm definitely not pronouncing that correctly, but you can find the information for it down below. I can't believe how packed with locals it is. Everyone's coming in with Tupperware containers and getting takeout probably to take back to the office. Really hearty, delicious food. Did you like it? Oh, I love it. Every single day, that's a great breakfast. Yeah, and really close to all the uh, tourist sites here in Budapest too. As you can see behind me, we are just about to cross the River Danube. And I did just want to mention that before Budapest used to actually be two different cities. So Buda, the side that we are on now, and Pest, the side on the other side of the river. So let's head over now to Pest. There are a lot of bridges here in Budapest, but this one has got to be the most famous. This is the Chain Bridge. So not only is this one of the main thoroughfares over the river, but it's also a tourist attraction. So it can get pretty busy, but the sights are absolutely incredible. This was opened in 1849, beautiful stone architecture and just 
gorgeous views over the river Danube. So we are just chilling on the bridge, taking in the beautiful views, and this is a great time to thank today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. For those of you who don't know, a virtual private network or VPN is the best way to ensure your total security when doing anything online. So all you have to do is click the app, open it up, and with one click, just like that, Boom, I'm connected to secure network in the Netherlands, even though I'm here in Hungary. Besides online security, I also use it for watching my favorite TV shows on Netflix and YouTube videos that may not be available in the country that we are traveling to. And another big one for us is when we are in China, the Great Firewall of China, as you may or may not know, does not allow you to use YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, and many other sites that we need to use. So using ExpressVPN allows us to get over that and use the internet as normal. So Chopstick Travel viewers are getting their first three months free by clicking the link down in the description box or typing in expressvpn.com slash chopstick travel. Now let's get back to the show. So we are now on the Pesh side of the Danube River and behind me you can see one of the landmarks of Budapest, the Parliament Building, a massive building with neo-Gothic architecture. There's a huge square, you can take in the views of the river and just admire this incredible feat of architecture. It's absolutely gorgeous, one of the largest buildings in Hungary. So right now it's about the middle of October. The leaves have just started changing colors, but the weather is still beautiful. It's actually kind of hot here today. And we are heading now to try one of Hungary's most famous street foods. So here I have it, one of the most popular street foods in all of Hungary, the famous langos. And we're at a very popular stall called Retro Langos Buffet. We ordered pretty much the most traditional kind, which is with uh, sour cream, cheese, and onions. And it's all on this huge deep fried piece of dough. This is seriously thick. I don't even know how many calories this thing must have, but there's nothing healthy about this except maybe those onions. I'm gonna try to rip some of this off my fingers. I don't really know how you're supposed to eat this either. It is really heavy, hot, and covered with toppings. But let me rip this off. Oh yeah, it is smoking hot. Get a little bit more cheese, and let me try that. Really oily, really greasy, salty from that cheese, sour from the cream, and a little freshness from those onions. Honestly, this is the best thing I could come up with if it was two in the morning and I was really drunk. There's nothing more you would want than this. But I think I gotta go in for another bite and uh, get more of this filling. There's really not much to it. It is greasy but good, wow. Just look at the amount of grease that is coming off on this parchment paper. Honestly, this is the epitome of grease and unhealthiness. I really couldn't even conceptualize something more unhealthy. Cheese, cream, deep fried dough. Honestly, the onions are just there for color, really. But it is kind of sinfully delicious. There's like, two inches of cheese on top. Look at that. Look at all that cheese. I believe there's no proper way to eat this. It's very ungraceful. They do provide forks, but they're plastic. We're not gonna use them. Plus, I don't think it's useful anyway. I'm gonna go in for a bite, but let us know down in the comments how many calories you think must be in one of these bad boys. It's gotta be a lot. It's gotta be in the thousands, whatever. Very good. They have tons of options, but we went with, like I said, pretty much the most traditional. They also have stuffed langos too. So it's just all those ingredients stuffed inside and then deep fried. They have smoked cheese, uh, sheep's cheese, 
sausage, bacon, all kinds of things. It can get even more unhealthy. But even spam. Yes, yeah, spam. Yuck. Yeah, so uh, pretty good. I'd definitely give it a try, but make sure you're planning to go for a big walk around <laughs> Budapest. Ah. Okay. Right next to this langosh place, this is kind of like a street food area, so you can also get tacos and you can also get donor kebabs behind me. So this is kind of like your street food stop area. here at the Central Market Hall, which is the largest market here in Budapest. It's this gigantic and beautiful building with this wrought iron structure, famous for paprika, cured meats, and goose liver, which are all some very popular products from Hungary. Just an incredible place to walk around. We're on the bottom floor where a lot of the fresh uh, produce and products are sold, but the upstairs is where the magic really happens. That's where all the eateries are. So let's head up and get some lunch. <laughs> It is super busy up here. This is definitely a little bit of a touristy place, but some of the foods look really good here. They have all the typical Hungarian uh, foods, so we're just trying to pick one out that looks really good. We picked a spot to sit down at. It's the one at the very end of the row of little stalls in the corner, and they're only serving a few dishes, and the two things that we wanted to try the most they had. This first is the stuffed cabbage. So it's a roll, a cabbage roll, and it's been stuffed with rice and pork, and then we've also got all of this pickled cabbage, almost like sauerkraut on the side, and then served with sour cream, which is really interesting. And then over here, this is the chicken peppery cash, usually served with uh, maybe little kind of dumplings or with rice, but we just went with just the chicken leg, and you can see that creamy paprika sauce, almost like a curry consistency underneath. Let me just kind of break into this so we can take a look inside. Man, this thing is huge, way bigger than I thought they were going to be. Look at that, wow. So it looks like there's even more cabbage inside, some minced pork, and then lots of rice. And that's like some thick grained rice. Let me grab a little bit of the sour cream, and I'm gonna put that right on top. And you can see that this has also been stewing in that uh, paprika sauce. I think I gotta cut this in half. Oh, I'm gonna break it. I'm gonna have to go one bite. This is gonna be a huge bite. much flavor going on. Sourness because that cabbage has been pickled, but also sourness from that sour cream. Crisp on the outside and then soft meat and uh, rice on the inside. I'm gonna try some of this side cabbage. And of course, you can taste that paprika too, which may be a smoked paprika. Mm. Perfectly sour. Not too spicy, but you can taste that pepper flavor. That is Really, really good. Next up is the chicken paprikash. This is one of the most famous Hungarian dishes besides the regular goulash soup that we had this morning. Um, just chicken that has been stewing in this beautiful paprika, sweet paprika sauce. And look at that nice thick piece of chicken thigh. Mm. It just tastes so homemade. Not as overpowering as it may look. It's actually kind of a subtle, creamy flavor. You can taste some maybe onions in there, maybe garlic. Now chicken is just ridiculously tender. Oh man, this is so good. This is like home style food, just how I like it. That was really good. I'd say that the flavors are quite traditional and authentic. The atmosphere is really cool too. If you don't mind it being a little bit touristy, there are a lot of options. So we're gonna head back downstairs now and get ourselves a juice. The food here at Hungry 
hungry is pretty salty, so it is good to keep yourself hydrated. And we chose a fresh fruit drink. This is fresh orange juice from the very back of the market. It's a little expensive, but I still think it's gonna be really nice. Let's give it a try. Ooh, that is pulpy. Wow, mm, oranges here are good. I wonder where they get them from. That's delicious. Really cool market. Honestly, I think my favorite part about it is the architecture. It's super cool just to walk around inside with these super tall ceilings, almost like you're in a cathedral or something. Yeah. So actually, I think we're gonna head back to the Buddha side of the river. We are quite full and we're going to check out the famous Castle District. We've made it to the Castle District. This is a beautiful area of Budapest where there are some famous sites like the Fisherman Bastion, which we're heading to now, and also the Matthias Church, beautiful church, and just really nice walking streets, cobblestone, and it's quite touristy, but it is really beautiful. You can see the church behind me here. It is absolutely huge. My favorite part I'd have to say is the tiling on the roof. It's got this really kind of unique multicolored pattern, really beautiful. And then over here is the Fisherman Bastion. I really couldn't find much in terms of uh, why it's called the Fisherman Bastion online. So if you know, let me know down in the description box. But basically it's kind of this fortress built on the side of the wall overlooking the city of Budapest. Really gorgeous architecture once again. And there is an upper area which costs money to go up to and then the lower area is free but actually we came here maybe around 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. the other night and we were able to go up to the top for free so if you're here around then maybe try it out. So it is definitely very touristy here but for good reason it is really beautiful. Yeah, Do you think so? it's super gorgeous. If there's a reason why everybody's down here. It's a great area for doing photo shoots. Oh yeah. There aren't too many really good restaurants around this area because it is so tourist oriented, but there is one place that we want to try out. It's a confectionery, a traditional Hungarian bakery and cafe. So we're going to head over there now and try it out. sitting down now at the cafe there are some outdoor seats and then also some indoor seats it is extremely busy here this is a very popular place it's called Rusworm confectionery since 1827 really cool historical traditional Hungarian cafe the inside I was reading online they have a cherry wood counter that's over 200 years old so here we have their menu it's quite an extensive menu with uh, all kinds of coffee and alcohol and tea, but we went for some coffee and their famous uh, Rusworm cake and also their Rusworm cream cake. So lots of good looking things on the menu, but those are the most famous. So we are Rus sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, we have our two um, pastries. The first is the famous Rusworm cream cake and just look at the layer of cream there that is like two inches of cream and this thing is seriously heavy and it looks like it has a nice kind of flaky crust on the top with some powdered sugar over here is the dark chocolate rusworm cake maybe it looks like there's some nuts inside i believe it looks like a candy cherry and then back here you can see these kind of chocolate sprinkles these look so good but i have to go for this one first which looks really oh wow that is so soft Wow. So this is like whipped cream on the inside. They don't use uh, egg, which is the traditional. Instead, they opt for whipped cream, which makes this one unique. Wow. There's not really too much to it. It's basically just like a mouthful of whipped cream. Kind of tastes like when you take the canister of whipped cream and just squirt it in your mouth. There's really not much to it. The crust on the top kind of just disintegrates. It's a really thin layer. It's not bad, but that is a lot of cream. This thing is crazy. It's not that sweet though, which is nice. Wow, let's try one more bite. It's 
it's just, okay, it's not my favorite. Dark chocolate cake is one of my guilty pleasures. I can't get enough of it. This looks like it's gonna be very sweet. It's real dark chocolate. Actually, it's almost a little bitter. Wow, it's very light as well. And there's nuts within the icing, so it gives it a little bit of a crunch. That's great. Overall, not a bad cafe experience. Just really popular with tourists, really busy. Service isn't super quick or anything necessarily, but everything is quite good. Just finishing it off with uh, macchiato. What a good day of exploring Budapest. If you have a sweet tooth, that place is for you. Really good desserts and cool location, all a bit touristy. But that's gonna be it for today's episode from Budapest. We we're only able to make one video here, but I hope you enjoyed it. And all the information for the places we visited today will be down in the description box. So when you visit, you can uh, visit them yourselves. What did you think? Oh. Budapest was really cool. You can see the whole city basically in one day, so it's like a one-stop shop. Get everything you want to eat, all the Hungarian yeah. fixes. What was your favorite food? Oh, that goulash. That goulash, Come yeah. That's so good. I have to go with the stuffed cabbage roll. That was my Oh favorite. yeah, that was good too. That was different. I expected it to taste different, but yeah. it surprised me. Really good. So we are on to Italy next. Make sure if you haven't already, hit the bell icon so you're notified when we post a video. Subscribe and leave us a comment down below what you thought looked the most delicious. And we will see you again very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.